Hi everyone, welcome to our webinar, Learn How to Host Events Virtually with Blue Jeans Events. My name is Maggie Bliss and I will be your moderator this morning. Today I'm joined by Justin McKeffey, our Blue Jeans Product Marketing Manager. So before we kick things off, there are a few housekeeping items I'd like to go over. So first, we are using the Blue Jeans Events platform, so you as an attendee are in a one-way viewing experience. Um, if you look on the right-hand side of your screen, you can see the navigation bar. Feel free to check that out. The third icon down is the moderator chat feature. So if you have any technical issues, put them in there and I'll address them as quickly as possible. The last icon is our Q&A chat feature. So if you have questions for myself or Justin, please put them in there and we'll address those at the end of the presentation. And lastly, this is being recorded and I'll send it out to you later today or tomorrow at the latest. Perfect, and with that, I'll pass it over to you, Justin. Hey, thank you, Maggie, and thank you, everybody that's joining us this morning. I'm excited to get to talk to you, learn how to host events virtually with Blue Jeans, and I'll walk through this agenda right now, what you can expect on today's webinar. So I'm going to start off by talking about the use cases and challenges associated with live streaming. I'll then walk through the Blue Jeans events overview. I'll give you a high-level look at what the product can do, and then we'll go into greater detail with that feature breakdown about each feature and piece of functionality that we offer with Blue Jeans events. Then we'll talk through some of our integrations partners. And at the end, I'd love for you to ask some questions. So if you have anything, please keep that in mind. Use the right-hand column, like Maggie said, and ask away. We'd be happy to answer them at the very end. So with that, we'll launch right into this. And I just wanted to start off by making a distinction between internal events versus external events. So if you think about internal events, Generally speaking, we use terms like town halls, all hands, corporate communications, announcements, large staff meetings, and the purpose of those large meetings are for the employee experience. If you take that and you compare it to what's on the right-hand side, these are external events, and these are focused on the customer experience. So some terms there, marketing webinars, keynote speeches, brand awareness types of events, entertainment and media, the, the list is pretty lengthy, I think, on both of these things, but just wanted to level set and get on the same page with you in terms of definitions and how we classify these two different things. So then when we talk about the objectives of these two different events, they're pretty different for a couple of reasons, but they actually do share a few similarities. So here's what I mean. On the employee experience side, internal events, the object normally is to connect the entire workforce and align teams across the organization. And the point of that is to improve internal knowledge about the business, about different strategies, about what's coming up in terms of the next couple of quarters from the internal perspective. Also managing the corporate image, especially when it comes to some of those E-level and C-level executives that speak on those calls. Got to make sure those folks look good and sound good as they address the entire company. And then advocating for corporate culture. So here's our mantra. This is what we believe in. These are our HR mandates and sort of compliance measures that we'd like everybody to follow. And then finally, breaking down silos, closing feedback loops, and making sure everybody in the company is on exactly the same page. And then on the right-hand side, in the gray, external events. This is for an external audience, for customers, for leads. And the purpose of those live streaming events are to generate high-quality leads and assist in the sales qualification process. Even nurture customers and keep the communication high as you present this content and explain what it is your business sells, products and services, that kind of thing. It's important to repurpose and reuse content when it comes to external events. Managing the image of your company, obviously very important, and also reducing external reliance on third-party agencies. So it's one of those things like this morning, for instance, Maggie and I put together this webinar and we did it ourselves. We didn't need some third party to help us out with it. And so that certainly comes into play when you talk about budget constraints, things like that. It's really good to have the ability to present these presentations to a lot of people with your own product. And then in the middle, what do these two groups have in common? Engagement is important. Great rock solid communication is important. Scalability and also participation. So even though the audiences are not the same, some of the features and the functionality are very similar in terms of what you get in the middle there with those two. And I'll make a little uh, note about the rest of this presentation. I'm gonna go into pretty great detail about external events and the customer experience, but if you'd like more information about internal events and the employee experience, we've got a whole bunch of webinars that cover that as well as supporting documentation too. So uh, from here on out, I'm gonna go into this external use case. So we're gonna talk about these field event challenges. 
So number one, uh, physical space costs, you know, spatial constraints and also, you know, budget based limitations that may prevent you from hosting these events in a, in a public place or in a community space. Obviously, finances need to be considered. Um, and along with that comes the ability to accommodate a lot of attendees. So attendee capacity is a consideration. Uh, the travel and the logistical resources needed to make one of those big events come together. The ability to calculate and prove ROI on those uh, fairly pricey events, that's important and can be a challenge as well. And then finally, generating revenue leads and brand awareness within your budget. That kind of goes into that field event challenges bucket. But what I'll say about that is we've got this compounded challenge right now because of COVID-19. Social distancing measures have prevented a lot of these large in-person gatherings. And this is kind of the current state of affairs when we talk about shifting from on-site events to online events. So these different marketing opportunities and business exhibitions and customer conferences, you've got two different options right now because we're not allowed to meet in large gatherings in public spaces and convention halls. On the one hand, you can continue this momentum with inquiry volume and add to your pipeline, add to your lead generation strategy with live streaming. You can continue on that same track or you can wait this thing out and lose out on some of that momentum that you've built up for a long period of time. Nobody wants to do that. Obviously, use a solution that's going to help you continue that brand awareness and bring more customers into your business that might be interested in what you're selling. And so for that, we offer Blue Jeans events. And this is that high-level overview that I was talking about. These things that we think differentiate, differentiate us in the streaming solutions market. Number one on the attendee benefit side is video interactivity. Obviously, really important for the attendees that have joined your event to have the ability to speak up and really get immersed and pulled into that content so they can experience what it is you're explaining to them from a product or demonstration point of view. Also, the ability to join from any conference room or desktop or mobile device. It doesn't matter where people are joining from. They can watch from anywhere, watch on their mobile device or watch on their desktop computer. Download free, very important, obviously, for a friction-free experience when you invite them to your event. That means it's browser-based and they don't need to download a desktop application. And then on the admin side, we talk about moderator control. If you've hosted these types of webinars and large live streaming events before, it's really hard to manage an audience of thousands of people if you don't have a centralized dashboard where you've got complete access to different communications tools and chat functions and the ability to share content as well. Also scalable with different applications and integrations by leveraging their API, APIs and ours at BlueJeans. And so I'll give you more detail about that in just a moment. So when I talk about uh, these different participant roles, specifically when it comes to moderator control, here's what I mean. So BlueJeans events offers three different participant roles when you join an event. Moderators, presenters, and attendees. Obviously, if you're watching this right now, we sent you an attendee link and you're joining via that interface. But on our end, in terms of the moder inter moderator interface, uh, Maggie, for instance, she has this dashboard. This is her user interface that she can see across the entire event when it comes to communication. So if she's going to push out polls or ask questions or answer questions of the audience, she's got that ability all at her disposal within you know, her fingertips as well as the ability to change the video displays and the layouts and push content if I needed her to. So this is the difference between moderators and presenters because as a presenter, this is how I've joined. And the user interface is designed so that I can focus on the content that I came to talk about. Or if your presenters at your con uh, company have a lot of content and they're given a demonstration or a cool product, um, launch or something like that, they can focus on their content and leave the technical and logistical aspects to the moderator. So there's still the ability to speak with the audience, chat with the audience, communicate and stuff like that. But generally speaking, it's very straightforward so that presenters can focus on their talk track. And then uh, this is what you can see right now. This is the attendee interface. You, you've got the video stream on one side and the ability to communicate on the other. And the video interactivity piece I was talking about a minute ago, I'm gonna go into greater detail about that and stress the importance of these types of marketing events, whether it's you know, a traditional marketing webinar or a live streaming event in lieu of an in-person trade show or a conference, 
or any type of entertainment type of a live stream, the ability to really get the audience's attention and establish that human to human connection is super important because it's pretty hard to debate, you know, as pricey as some of those in-person events can be, those large trade shows and field events, there's nothing better than being able to speak face to face and learn more about the lead's interest, your customer's interest and establish that relationship because a lot of times it's their first contact with your company and, if, and with the representatives of your company if they get to meet you in person for the first time. So let's take that concept and apply it to a live, a live streaming environment. With BlueJeans events, up to 150 different participants can join as presenters. They can appear on camera, up to 150. And then with our solution, you can reach up to 50,000 end users or endpoints. And so the beauty of that is you can reach a lot of people at once. Obviously, it's highly scalable. You can reach a large audience. But like I said, the importance of establishing that human to human and face to face contact is really important. And so this is where Blue Jeans Events goes one step further. Rather than only offering this one way broadcast, what if attendees have a question and they want to appear on camera and address some of the other presenters on camera? Well, all they need to do is raise their hand. The moderator then promotes them into the presenter position, and they have the ability to be a part of that conversation, ask their burning questions, uh, be, be involved with whoever had presented if they'd like to follow up a clarification on something. And then after they've said their piece, they've been involved in the conversation, the moderator can demote them, so to speak, back to the attendee role. And so when you talk about immersive video and the need to really establish a connection and begin that business relationship with folks that are watching the live stream, man, this is a great way to do it. Quality streaming for any user. This is that friction-free host or join concept that I brought up in the overview. Any operating system is supported by BlueJeans events. So whether people are joining on Macs, PCs, Androids, or iPhones, Linux, we support all that. Um, whether it's their desktop or their laptop or mobile device, no problem at all. Also, no download of an application, click the join link, watch in your favorite browser like you have done today if, if you're watching this presentation. And then once the world returns to normal and a lot of folks start going back into the office again, conference room join or host is available. And that's been a part of the BlueJeans story for a very long time. Cloud video interoperability is really important to us because we know there's tons of different hardware solutions out there. You might be a, a Polycom company or a LifeSize or a Cisco or a Yealink or a Logitech, and it doesn't matter. You can stream to those endpoints and you can host from those endpoints. And it creates this really great dynamic and community atmosphere if a lot of people are watching in the same room at the same time. And then finally, uh, baked into the product is our integration with Dolby Voice. And so that's intelligent audio and noise suppression. So everything that's said on the call by presenters is heard crystal clear and it blocks out any unwanted distractions should they come up in the background. Okay, so threw a lot at you there, and uh, I'll go into a little bit greater detail about some of our engagement tools with BlueJeans events. So here's our features section. The audience engagement piece, incredibly important. So there's a couple of different ways to look at this. I like to think of the event chat feature as number one, a great way to communicate as a community with all of the other folks that are watching this presentation or a marketing webinar or some type of an exposition like that. They can comment, they can respond to your content all in a community environment, or they can save their questions for individual presenters for the Q&A portion on the very bottom there. And so usually at the end of a demonstration or some kind of a product launch, that time is reserved for presenters to address the audience questions, and they have the, the ability to, to text in or chat in those, those questions with the Q&A. Um, also, audience polling, very, very important when you talk about uh, lead qualification and try and establish maybe some level of interest among the people that are watching your presentation. And I'll give you an example about that. So if you've got some, some great new product launch or some big brand activation presentation and you want to get a little bit more feedback and data points from the folks that are watching the call all you need to do is quickly set up a poll and ask for instance about hey buying timeline how interested are you zero to three months three to six months six to nine months well anybody that answers zero to three months is probably worth a, a, a special follow-up conversation if they if they're really interested in your product 
and they're currently shopping the market for a new solution. So keep that in mind. Polls are great, especially when it comes to that uh, early relationship building and getting some data about their propensity to buy or their uh, behavior. So engagement tools that drive participation. This is just another way of looking at it. This is what the moderator can see from BlueJeans events. Um, easily can answer questions this way and push out polls that way. And the other great aspect about this is you get real-time data and feedback from the audience. So as they're responding to some of these poll questions, the moderator knows exactly how they've answered. And yes, while that's very important for the follow-up process, like I mentioned for perhaps a, a sales conversation moving forward, it's also great for you know redirecting the conversation. If you've got you know really talented speakers that are able to kind of steer the conversation in the direction based on the way the audience has responded to a poll, well, use that data to your advantage. It can really go a long way. A video share and play, a screen share and video playback, the ability to share your screen or individual applications so that folks in the audience can see what it is the presenters are talking about. I'm obviously sharing PowerPoint right now. And then the ability to upload video and media content and then play that back to your audience. A very simple process uh, from an admin's perspective. If you're in the moderator dashboard or the presenter dashboard, upload the video, give it appropriate time to process, and then once it's ready, push it out to the audience during your live event. Branding and customization. Super important too for continuity and marketing purposes from the time that a customer or a prospect sees the invitation email. You can customize that with your own text. You can add your brand and logo in there over to the registration page where you've got the ability to change color schemes, also add your logo, and then right into the in-app experience. So if they're watching the presentation in the lower corners of the, of the event window, you can add your watermark or your logo so that they know exactly who it is they've come to see that day. Post event reports with all of that data that you've captured during the event, from Q&A to the chat transcripts to the polling data, all of that arrives in your inbox as an event organizer in an Excel spreadsheet. And you can filter that data and use it for a follow-up process after you've uh, set that up with your sales team or one of your CRM tools. You can easily import that data and allow your uh, sales folks to follow up accordingly based on the folks that attended your event. and more advanced analytics as well. So our engagement index, this measures the attentiveness of the audience on a scale of one to 100. Very cool feature that we offer. So here's how we, we calculate the engagement index. Three different values are taken into consideration, duration, participation, and level of focus. So for instance, if you're speaking on a 30 minute webinar or an hour long webinar, if somebody watched for just five minutes, and they didn't answer any questions, obviously they're gonna score very low. But if they watch for the entirety of it and they ask like 10 questions, they will score 100 out of 100. And a lot like the way certain folks answer the poll questions, that person that has a high level of engagement, they're probably worth a, a different type of a follow-up too. Uh, clearly they were interested in the content. And then BlueJeans Command Center, this is our dashboard that contains uh, all data, all different endpoint and geographic distributions. How did they watch? Where did they watch from? What kind of a browser? Was it a, a room system join? Was it a device join? Was it a, a desktop join? All of that is located in BlueJeans Command Center, as well as some of these different attendee data points about questions they asked, uh, polls that they answered, et cetera. Okay, and now I'm gonna shift into integrations. And so, one thing that we've definitely been a part of in the last few years is this initiative to integrate with other applications. We understand there are all kinds of different business productivity tools, work stream tools, and marketing automation tools out there, and event management tools out there. So why not integrate with them? Uh, they do that best, we do live streaming best. We bring those two things together and immediately we multiply value for end users. And so I'll give you, an example about what I'm talking about here. I've, I've kind of separated these three different ways. So we like to think of our integrations as adaptable for any event type, audience or administrator. So from the embedded and integrated live streaming piece, which literally sends the BlueJeans video component through a different platform, we offer that, to promotion and follow-up and branding and uh, you know creating a seamless 
marketing experience from the time they get the invitation to the time that they sign up to the time that you follow up after the fact. We integrate that way and also the ability to record events so that you can integrate that archived video with a different storage provider or a different uh, application provider that provides storage, such as Panopto. That's, that's a big one out there. Um, I'll start with the upper left on the integrations and the embedded streaming. So Facebook Live, this is fantastic for reaching very large audiences. Uh, you know, we're very proud of the fact that we can reach 50,000 people on BlueJeans events if they're joining via the attendee link, but hey, what if you wanted to reach millions of people or all of the folks that are following your Facebook page? Well, set up the Facebook Live integration and everybody that goes to your page, how you promote it to your Facebook Live page, they get to watch the video stream, they can comment within Facebook, and suddenly you've amplified your brand presence from a few thousand to perhaps millions, if that's the number of people that follow your page. HTML embed, so as an administrator or an event organizer, while you're setting up the event, you've got the ability to create an HTML code, simple copy and paste, you put that into your web page, and then rather than directing them to BlueJeans, to the BlueJeans attendee link, if you do that, fantastic, no problem with that. But if you'd like them to instead go to your website or have the option to watch from your website, just grab that HTML code, embed it into your domain, and suddenly they're all landing on whichever page you want them to at your domain. Uh, Splash, this gives you the ability to customize every event touch point with branded promotion, landing pages, and tracking. And so I'll just put it in these terms. Like I've mentioned, BlueJeans does live streaming very well, but event management tools like Splash, man, do they do customization well. They do it uh, very, very uh, succinctly from the time that someone gets invited to the event to the time that they register, the confirmation email, the whole thing is white labeled so that you can change every single component of that experience, every single touch point within the lead or the customer journey. A ticket socket, this is a, a virtual pay gate or a, a paywall that you can add to your live streaming event too. So sometimes you just want to invite people for free and sometimes if it's, let's say an exclusive event where you're giving an early beta release of a product and you wanna pay, you want folks to pay to be there and watch that, you can easily put up this paywall so that they can't enter the BlueJeans event unless they've gone through the TicketSocket payment system. This is set up on the back end through TicketSocket. You essentially are grabbing the BlueJeans event via webhooks, and then on the front end, the prospect or the customer would see this paywall, they enter their information, and then they get to enter their event after they've paid to join with a unique link. Marketo, this allows you to sync registration data in Marketo for a seamless audience tracking experience. So again, Marketo does uh, customer database management very, very well. And so if you'd like to invite thousands of people to your event, invite them through Marketo and send out invitations that way. We can do that with BlueJeans. And very similar with Salesforce, the, uh, the best CRM out there, at least the, the most popular one out there, that's for sure. You can capture that attendee data for faster follow-up and remove that step which requires you to download the Excel document and then re-upload it into Salesforce. Just integrate the data for a seamless experience right into uh, your, your lead queue and your campaign queues so, so that the territory reps can follow up. Okay, and that was 25 straight minutes of talking. And now I am happy to say I'm gonna take a little bit of a break and I'm gonna hand it over to Maggie, but before I do, please don't be shy. Use the Q&A on the right-hand side. Any topic that I covered, would love to talk through if you've got a question, and uh, we'll take it from there. So Maggie, over to you. Hi, Justin, that was fantastic. We actually have quite a few questions that have already come in. Thank you everyone for asking. And I'll let you take a break from talking and actually cover one. So we had a question, how do we send out the email with the invitation to the meeting? So this is my bread and butter. I send out all of our invitations for all of our webinars. And we here at BlueJeans use it through our Marketo integration. So we, with that integration, every single person will get a unique link to view um, the webinar, which is how you attended this one. You also have the option of just having a one-time attendee link that you can copy and paste and put into any email program that you're currently using. You can post that on your landing pages, you can post it wherever you like. So those are the two best options for sending out invitations. 
Um, and Justin, here are the question for you. What is the format you're using for the presentation? So if you have PowerPoint, how can you share that? Or do you need to upload a PowerPoint presentation before the event starts? No, you don't need to upload anything before the event starts. And that's actually a great example. So we do these webinars with BlueJeans weekly. And sometimes if you need to change something or you want to adjust the slide like right before the event, I did that right before this event, just edit in, in your PowerPoint slideshow and you're ready to share your screen. You don't need to upload it with advanced time or anything. Just go full screen mode and everybody can see whatever changes you've made. Perfect. And then someone asks about closed captioning. Is that available on events? And if it is, where can they find that feature located in the events platform? So uh, little bit of product news that we're gonna make a little bit more noise about here in the next couple of weeks, but that is, about to be released, please hang with us. But yes, you will be able to see closed captioning soon. Perfect. Um, someone said they love the slider between the two screens. Can the live video be in HD? Can the live video be in HD in terms of the presenter's feed? Yes. So if it's anything but HD right now, it's typically due to bandwidth constraints uh, or whatever your local environment supports right now at the moment. But in terms of HD video streaming, we do offer 720p. And when you move that slider around, it obviously adjusts the picture in picture. And so that's a great tool because it gives attendees the ability to customize their experience. And when you change it, however, just remember it will obviously adjust uh, picture clarity and quality based on the environment that you're watching from, if perhaps your your bandwidth or connectivity drops during the presentation. Perfect. And then a couple questions about the speaker view. So if you have a panel of speakers, so there's three or four people, can each of them appear on the screen simultaneously? And can they appear if you're having something presented, like your PowerPoint? Yes. So when you're a moderator or a presenter, you've got the ability to change the video display. And so you can have active presence, content, constant presence, or a multiple speaker presence. And I hope I said that right, but you're essentially creating a Brady Bunch view. So you can do that easily as a moderator or a presenter if you want only those presenters, those three or four to appear on the same time, you can absolutely do that. Perfect, and then can you see which attendees responded to the poll? Um, and then can, how do you do a follow-up one-on-one with them after the meeting? Where can they find that information? So when you push the polls out to the audience, the moderators are getting instant feedback. That's that real-time data return that I was talking about. So when you do your one-to-one -one follow-up, like let's use my example. So if, if folks are really interested in your product and you add like zero to three months, what's your buying timeline? Just remember when you get the Excel doc after the event is over, you can easily filter those polling questions and get, you know, grab those 10 people that am answered that way and follow up specifically. So on your end, in terms of follow up, there is a little bit of a manual process when it comes to, you know, data follow up or database follow up, but you've got all of that uh, in the same doc at the very end of the event and you can do it that way. Awesome. And then we have one from Paul who says, BlueJeans allows shared screen or video, but are you showing both at the same time? So can you show video and your screen at the same time? So, okay, so here's what happens. Uh, as the moderator, so moderator or a presenter chooses to play their video for the audience, that will be the primary content stream. And so you can't do screen share on one side and video playback on the other, it's one or the other. Perfect. And then um, I have a question for you about the Facebook Live. Does that integrate with Workplace? Yes. Uh, so, great example. If you are doing an external event, use Facebook Live. You want to reach millions of people that follow your Facebook page, go that route. But if you're an internal user for communications and you use Workplace by Facebook, stream to your newsfeed or stream to different groups within Workplace by Facebook. We do that at BlueJeans. And it's great. Sometimes we'll do internal events or internal product launches or uh, town halls and stuff that we stream to everybody that's in Workplace. And it's just another way you can easily access content as an employee. Perfect. And then 
Jimmy asks, can admins pre-select participants ahead of time and enter them at a specific time in the event? Read that again, if you would, please, Maggie. Can admins be pre-selected, pre-select participants ahead of time and then enter them at a specific time in the event? Absolutely. Can you have the event going and then add, add the participants at a specific time? It, the, so the onus would be on them to join when they're supposed to. Like, so let's say you're doing, you're doing a three hour long event and you've got a couple of moderators designated, they're handling the logistics and you've got maybe a number of different keynotes or a number of different presenters that you want to show up during the event, go about it two different ways. Either those presenters are with you the whole time and they stay muted, and you can do that as a moderator. You can mute them or they can unmute them, mute them, mute themselves. Or if you just want them to show up in 15-minute in increments, okay, Susie is going to speak at 9.15, Bob is going to speak at 9.30, Jack is going to speak at, at 9.45. Just make sure you invite them to the event with those time constraints. And they can join the event um, by default. They'll be muted when they join, so it won't interrupt the video flow or anything like that. Max, check your audio. Do a, a mute on mute. Sorry about that. You're good. Um, can music be played during a presentation? Uh, you could do a number of things. You could either take a portable speaker like I use and play it right next to your microphone or in the very beginning of the event if you showed up a couple of minutes early we have music that is playing in advance you can choose to turn that off or you can keep that on by default so that the folks that are waiting in the lobby so to speak they've got something to listen to before the event starts okay. and then is there a lobby where you can have participants wait and allow them to enter at a specific time so the lobby join experience is possibly what you saw at, you know, two minutes before the hour if you joined us a little bit early. That's like a holding queue where uh, Maggie and I were like backstage actually. So she, she and I were just talking about logistics. How are we going to do this thing? Okay, here's the flow. You couldn't see us talking about that until she hit start broadcast. Then when she hit start broadcast, everybody in the audience can then view the experience. So in terms of join times and stuff, much like my presenter advice a moment ago, ask certain attendees to join at certain times if you'd like that, that flow to work that way. Perfect. And then can there be a transmission of two audio channels at the same time in two different languages? Transmission of two different audio channels at the same time in two different languages, yes. Uh, we would lean on our partner called Interpify. And so th here's the way that that works. Interpify is a real-time language translator. And so you have the option to join as an attendee via BlueJeans events. So this BlueJeans link on browser, what we would recommend is you watch the content from that interface, but you keep your audio muted. You keep the incoming audio muted. And at the same time, you can dial in through this third-party provider, Interpify, as I mentioned, and you can listen to any translation that you need, English to German, German to Japanese, you name it. So they would be listening on that mobile device, but watching the event on the uh, desktop. Perfect. And then Jimmy asks, is there an intermission feature? You could, you could get creative with that. Uh, the short, I mean, the short answer is not exactly, but you could easily, let's say you needed a break, you needed a 15-minute break to get presenters on the same page. You could mute all audio, but keep a slide active on the screen. Hey, folks, uh, take a break, grab a drink. We'll be back here in a moment. Throw, the, throw that slide up on the screen so attendees can see it uh, while the audio is muted, and then just reactivate your camera and audio and stuff when it's time to start speaking again. Yeah. And just to piggyback off that, Justin, if you wanted to do the recording in two separate recordings, you just hit stop broadcast and it will go back to the green room kind of situation and then you can start broadcast again and it will be two different recordings. So that's another way to do an intermission. I would recommend, yeah, and that is one, that is one good option. And do uh, use your start and stop recording feature for that because you'll find that in the storage, the webinar storage library at bluejeans.com, you can segment these things into different chapters 
and just access them later based on when you start started and stopped the recording. Perfect. And then Seth says, where can I get a copy of this webinar? Seth, I will email it to you later today or tomorrow morning. And if you have any additional questions, you can definitely reply to that email and I will personally follow up with those. Perfect. And with that, I think we have about hit time. Thank you everyone for joining. Thank you, Justin, for that presentation. Um, again, this, re this is recorded. I will send it to you either today or tomorrow morning. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Take care.